All right, well, coming up, give us 10 minutes, and we're going to get your year in gear. This is great, people at home. We've got you covered. Recharge, hit the reset for 2019 with some help from our all-star panel. we got financial expert Nicole Lappin. Budgeting sucks, but so does being broke, so it's time to get it together and get it all in 2019. Get it all in 2019. Our relationship expert, Dr. Ali, is with your love resolutions. Find out my number one trick to finding romance this year. Oh, I mm -hmm. feel love. I love a good trick. And parenting expert Samantha Edis with the must-dos for moms and dads. Beware of the latest gateway drug that is threatening our kids. What? What? Oh, love. <laughs> I'm in for all three. Woo! All right, well, actress Camila Bell is here with the official cocktail of the Golden Globes. Yes, you can drink like the stars. Get, coming get one for up. B. B, you want a cocktail? You want a cocktail? Woo! Thumbs up on that. Get All big. right. <laughs> who could this be? You know we'll be embarrassed tomorrow when we find out who it is. <laughs> As with the new year, many of us have made resolutions. You're not going to keep them, but you're going to try to. So now we're going to help you get into shape for 2019, financially, romantically, and as a parent. Join us now are three experts here. Nicole Lappin, author of Rich Bitch and Boss Bitch. I'm full of it today. <laughs> Scott yeah, is with Dr. Allie Powell-Hicks, a relationship consultant for The Spicy Life. And then we have parenting expert Samantha Edis. Each has two things you need to know in 2019. Okay, so Nicole, let's yes, start girl. with money. I need let's two great it. tips. We need money. We need right. money. You're right now. now. And it's time to get your credit score in order. That is goal numero uno. We got to check our credit score and we got to get it on point because our credit score is like our financial report card, so we want to get an A+. Plus. Am I right? Yes. And so it's connected to all the interest rates you pay on your credit cards, on your mortgage. So we want to get that in check first of this Like year. that. Tip number two. Start naming your savings accounts. It makes it easier to actually stick to it. It motivates you more. So what do you mean? Saving for like the Kit Mexico vacation fund versus just throwing them in a bunch of money into savings. It keeps you focused on visualizing what you're actually saving for. So create sub savings accounts. I love that. Okay, money. You heard that here, yeah. Scott. Uh, changing it to I need a house. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> All right, you. Thank you, ladies. All right. So I'm here with Dr. Ali Powell yeah. Hicks, and there are two things you say you. Need need to know when yes. thinking about romance in yes. 2019 first tip would be first tip first of all you have to make sure that you know yourself well enough to teach somebody else because uh -huh. relationship goals can be kind of complicated because a goal has to be something that you're in control of mm -hmm. right and if you're not in control of somebody proposing to you or you finding love on Twitter or Instagram or wherever mm -hmm. so you have to focus on things that you can control which are things like self Knowing yourself, knowing yourself well enough. And let's be real, we change every few years. Right. Every seven to 10 years, we kind of wake up and we're a different person. So even if you're older and you feel like, no, but I know myself, get re get to know yourself so you can make sure that they know who you are. So you're talking about, I want to get married. Maybe you need to figure out, are you marriage material? Are you marriage material? Gotcha. Right. And what do you have to do to become marriage material? Got it. You need to work on communication, on the way you, you move through the world, whatever. Mm -hmm. All right, second tip. What right. did you say? Second tip is project the love that you want to receive. You end up attracting people that are a mirror reflection of you. Ooh. And so, Ooh. yeah, I know. I know. I don't know. I'm, I'm... Stand so up, if turn you keep that. dating the same person, and you're like, why am I dating this person over and over and over again? Like, oh my goodness. Maybe it's because there's a tiny piece of you that is kind of projecting that into the world. So give what it is you want to receive. I don't know about that last one, but you got me on the first one. No, I'm just it's, kidding. It's, <laughs> hard. it's hard. It's, hard. it's right? real out here. Yeah. All right, guys, well, that's love. Let's move over to kids now. We got Samantha, parenting expert. Two things we can do better as parents. I'm all ears. Well, the first thing is role modeling. We spend so much time worrying about everything our kids eat and their activities, and we don't think about what they're seeing at home. So we want to model equal relationships at home. If you're doing 90% of the housework and your partner is doing 10%, that's the relationship your child is going to have in the future. Similarly, we feel so much guilt about working. Working is a great, you know, that's a great, that's a great role model. Daughters of working moms earn 23% more than daughters of working moms. So do it guilt-free. You're doing it for the whole family. Okay, tip number two. Two is vaping is a real threat now. Mm -hmm. Something like more than 20% of kids in high school have vaped in the last six months. And in the last year, it's gone up 87%. Wow. Explain to me vaping. Everybody on the panel is welcome this. So is it nicotine in there and it's, it's flavored it's, with like donuts? It's flavored. So these companies are flavoring them, flavoring them mango flavor, bubblegum flavor. It's really they're marketing them to kids. And kids think they're not addictive, but they are. So it's something to really be aware of and tell your kids about the dangers before they begin. 
All right, how early should we start with that? Do we have an age for that? Middle school. Middle I mean, school. there are kids Middle eating school. it. Middle I know. know. Sixth grade is a perfect time to talk to your kids about it. It's really, it's out there and it's everywhere. All right, parents, get on it. You gotta, we got love, we got finances, we got kid stuff. We aren't done with y'all yet. Mm -mm. We have some viewer questions for you, but that's going to come up next. I don't like this baby. Welcome back to Access Live. We brought in three experts, parenting expert Samantha Edis, romance expert Dr. Allie Powell hey Hicks, now. and finance expert Nicole Lapp. And this is an all-star panel, people at home. Now, they've each told us two things we need to know in 2019. Yes, and now we're going to hit the streets with some Good. questions from our viewers. So we're going to go in reverse order, starting with parenting. It's a question for Samantha. Here we go. Hi, my name is Raquel, and my question is, my daughter is nine years old, and I saw on social media that she wasn't invited to a party. What should I do? I hate that. It's the worst as a parent, right? You feel awful when you're left out, but when it's your kid, it's even worse. Mm -hmm. However, I have to ask, is this her own issue, that it's her insecurity, or is it her child? So often we put our own feelings and project them onto our kids. And then you realize, you know what, my kid didn't even care. Or mm. my kid's not on social media, so she didn't even know about it. So unless your child brings it up to you, you don't raise it to them. And then when you do, if you have to have that conversation, you say, you, you know, you sometimes get to invite one friend to sleep over and not all of your friends. These things happen and you move on. But the less emphasis you put on it, the less emphasis your child will put That's on. what I do. I say, you're not invited to every party, and you don't invite anybody to every party. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's have a party here. Okay, <laughs> next question. Hi, my name is Aaron Campbell. I'm a widower. I lost my wife about two years ago. Uh, can you, do you have any answers? How do you really get back out there? Uh, oh, you know, man. you have some pointers, you know, especially when they're coming after you like, you know, cats and dogs. So you tell me, what do you do? Uh -oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, Wait a minute. Okay. I know, it's what he switched it up at the end. <laughs> First okay. I thought, oh, I feel Let's so bad for him. And then he said, I have swatted them away. Cats and dogs. Cats and dogs, they are throwing it. Okay, okay. So sorry, Aaron. Uh, you're awesome. You're amazing. So sorry about your wife. But okay, so. First and foremost, I tell people, if you want to get back out there, do things that you enjoy doing and meet people there. Mm. So church, if you enjoy going to church, if you like golfing, meet someone there, library, museum, whatever, so that you can make sure that now you and this person have something in common. You're not taking up maybe rock climbing at the age of 50, you know, because if you meet someone new, you're like, you don't want to have to start over, right? right? New stuff. So that's number one. But if you're getting it like cats and dogs, then I mean, <laughs> you're, you're doing I fine. Him. He's so cute right there. <laughs> and then going back to re-getting to know who you are as a person, like I was saying earlier, who are you now? You've been in a relationship for a long time. You've probably changed and grown. Figuring out who you are, getting back to that so you can try to educate everyone you can yeah. about you. I just, it, what about the time frame? It, could, it, could it be like you need to wait a certain amount of time since the relationship and, and the, the death of his partner or, or what? I feel like it's a little different for everybody. Bereavement tends, um, basically there can be this year-long period mm -hmm. of average bereavement. And so he's two years out, but that's not to say that it's the same for everybody. Mm. Some people are in bereavement for five years, six years. And so if he feels like he's ready, then I say, D try it. It sounds Take like they're ready for him. He's right? <laughs> the ladies are ready for the Aaron. Ladies are the, ready. the ladies are ready. He's so, so Aaron, if you're ready, go for it. Go Happy for it. New Year, <laughs> Aaron. Okay, here's another one. Hi, Nicole. I am a single woman, and I am looking to purchase a home in the new year. But I want to know, how can I learn how to budget and save money so that I have enough money to put down for my new home? I love her. Well, budgeting sucks, right? <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but so does being broke. Being Ooh. broke sucks way more. I break it down into the three truth. That's true. <laughs> right That's there. True. I'm just keeping it real. Three E's, essentials, end game, and extras. I love alliteration. And so try to stick to 70% of your overall spending plan. I think of that as like an eating plan. It's something you can actually stick to. You allow yourself some of the extras so you don't end up binging later on. 70% to the basic stuff. So your housing, your food, your transportation, 15% to the extras, your latte, your mani pedi, whatever does it for you. So you stick to it. Mm -hmm. And then 15% to the end game. So her house or whatever it is she is saving for. I got to do that. I got college. You're looking at a house. Yeah, I'm trying to do a house this year, maybe. But sometimes the end game gets sucked in with the A yeah, to the exactly. extras. There's, you know, things pop up. Something it's pops up.
everything like a goldenrod suit. Like, like a you just rod need to have suit. your goldenrod suit fun. <laughs> you know, studies have shown that most folks do not have enough saved as an emergency fund for $400 of an emergency situation that, that comes up. Being a statistic is not no. cute. So before you even think about a house, you can't go to the grocery store with a mortgage. You need to make sure you have six to nine months of savings tucked away for the just in case. Oh, you know what? Fun. You said six to nine months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. the rainy day fun. Yeah. You gotta have it so before the golden rod fund. So we're probably going to do this house mm -hmm. next year. Yes, <laughs> 2020. 2020. <laughs> okay, wait. More questions. Give us another one. My daughter is 15. She is great in theater, but she wants to quit. I want her to stay in. What should I do? Interesting. I, I see this a lot. Such a hard one. The number one reason that kids quit an activity is because they think they're not good at it. So the first thing is to investigate what's behind this. Is it a sudden bout of insecurity, even with friendships, that could lead to her being insecure about the theater? Or is it something she's just really not enjoying? If she's not enjoying it, she's not going to be good at it, and she'll resent you for pushing her. Mm. So it's really about figuring out what is the motivation behind it. And the other thing you can do, which is a great trick, is to say you have to be involved in something. So if it's not theater, what is it going to be? Because we don't just hang out after school. We do something with our time. Yeah. So what is your activity going to be this semester? Find something. you got to get something. And if she's already started, you got to finish this one out, and then you can't exactly quit in the middle. You say, My exactly. mom already said, did we pay for it? Well, exactly. then you going to finish. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm a big believer in that. Okay, wait, one more. Yeah. Here we go. Hi, my name is Catherine. We're from New Jersey. We've been married two years. And I was wondering, how many times a week should we be having sex? Or a day. <laughs> <laughs> or a day. I love talking about sex. Okay. <laughs> this is fabulous. So, according to the research of Amy Muse, she was saying that basically more sex is always best, right? It's yeah. great to have sex, mm -hmm. but basically one time a week is kind of when you cap out at happiness, right? So that, that means one time a week versus two times a week isn't much different. But as long as you're kind of getting to one time, she said you should be all right. A remember, week. Remember we talked about this earlier and we said we were not going to say that on air? We, <laughs> remember we said oh. we were going to say it five times. Five we times. Said, we said this. Listen, five he's times. in a new relation, young love as an old one. married woman. I I know. Okay, so one, you're okay, One, right? you're okay. One they time said, a week? They said, they said that you should have the same amount of happiness as someone who has it five times a week. Really? So one time is, yeah. So we're talking about like some shebang -a bang <laughs> bang set. Yeah, like, you know, like, that wasn't in the study. <laughs> oh, see? But, but personally, I mean, I will say, I think, like, I agree. The more, the better. The Because it's also about your relationship. It's about your couple. Because sex is something that bonds us. Don't get me started talking about oxytocin and vasopressin and mm -hmm. the release of all these beautiful hormones that cause bonding. Oxytocin is a bonding hormone, and it is released during physical contact, especially sexual contact. Sexual contact. So basically, you want to make sure that you're releasing as much oxytocin as possible. Nicole and Samantha, how's your oxy? Oxytocin. 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 Mine's fine, thank you. And how's yours? <laughs> yeah. Working on it. That's a goal for 2019. Once a week, good right? goal. Once, once a week plus with all those kids, five, you're like, once a week sounds high. Five, five times, times a week, you're busy. What? You, you're busy. Yeah, busy yeah. getting busy. Yeah. <laughs> young, young, young. Nicole, young. you're not saying anything. Youth. I, I'm on the prowl. <laughs> I, you know, people want to know my sign. I just say dollar sign. At the yeah, there you go. <laughs> we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to hook her up. We're gonna have to hook her up. We're this one's gorgeous. Wait, yeah. should we, we really. We should you, do this on this would show. Would you be willing to? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fine. Okay, wait. Let's get to her question. We have a finance question. Here we go. Hi, Nicole. I'm 23. I was wondering how you would manage student debt as someone who's young like me. First of all, is he your type? He's too young, okay, but very too young. cute. And he, said, and he needs to get out of his student debt. Right? <laughs> I think with the, with the Tinder and the whatever, like, you need a filter for debt. I love oh, it. Oh, no. no. That's a good like, idea. It's like hair color, eye color. I'm like, I want to see how much debt you guys are How much are do in. you owe? Thank you. <laughs> but to our cutie 23-year-old, uh, I would say really prioritize to pulverize your debt. So student debt it's not awesome to have, but it's not the highest priority. So your mm. highest interest rates are first your credit card debt, then your mortgage. I don't think this homeboy has a mortgage, nope. um, but bless his heart. And then your car loan and your finally your student debt. They can take away your house. They can take away your car. They cannot take away your brain. That's we got to do some about this student debt, by the way. Mine are about to enter college. I've, the expense that college has, our stage manager son, Goes. I mean, I'm in awe of these kids it's graduate crazy. now with so much debt on their mm -hmm. plate. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you never breaking. quite make enough money 
to get it off, especially yeah. initially. And then there's not jobs out there. 2019 is awesome. Woo! 2019 is awesome. Awesome. <laughs> but you know what you guys, you know what is awesome? You ladies. You're right here. Wow. Let's hear from our panel right panel. there. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. You can check out more from Dr. Ali on the Spicy Life podcast, Nicole Lappin's online class, The Money School, and Samantha's book, The Pie Life, is available now. Happy 2019. Thank you. Happy Come back. I love this panel. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, the Golden Globes are Sunday, and Camilla Bell is here with the official drink that all the stars, yes, the stars. are going to be drinking. Yes. Plus, guys, tips for throwing your very own viewing party at home. It's after these messages. Oh, yes. It's Goldenrod. It's local station. Look at that. It matches your suit. Oh, oh we're winning already. <laughs> Y'all come have a cocktail.